season's greetings from the UIL as the Texas high school football playoffs kick off. Where else can you see the greatest Hendrickson team ever facing Austin Westlake in the first round? Oklahoma bounce Samaje Pirine is ready to take Hindu to the promised land. The Allen Eagles open up their title defense with a hungry Lake Highlands team. San Antonio with five district matchups that look like regional finals. Smithson Valley is on a mission. Plus, we have a panel of experts from all over the state. Corbett in the DF Dub, Ahmad in H-Town, and the Fox Sports Southwest Girls. Your season's on the line next on Fox Sports Southwest. into the fastest hour in sports. We call it Scoreboard Live. I'm Rick Renner, flying solo right now. The guru, Craig Way, is driving up from Austin. Apparently, he's in midnight traffic. He'll be here shortly. First week of the playoffs, we've already seen major upsets and a national field goal record. As the number one Argyle team rolls into by district, they win their first round game. Kicker Cole Hedlund had five whopping field goals, shattering the national record with 51 career field goals, and he did it in Argyle Sox. Well, we start in the Alamo City, and what a place to start with the Jaguars and the Rangers. Colossal matchup between San Antonio Johnson and Smithson Valley. Larry Hill doesn't drive an SUV, he just drives SV. The Rangers have won 38 of their last 40 regular season games, but they haven't made it past the second round in five years. Could this be the year? Let's go to San Antonio. Rangers roll into the playoffs at 10 and 0. Garrett Smith, the Smith Valley quarterback gets in for the score and they were up looking fine 21 to 7 but here comes Johnson they started to wake up it's Hunter Riddiman and I mean they are gonna be uh, several maybe five straps on the turf after this run what a run as he would get it down and that's the thing about Johnson they would never go away Riddiman rolling rolling and finding Devlin Gilligan the skipper that made the score 28 24 and Johnson pulls off the upset 49 to 45. We thought that Smithson Valley might give Katie a game, but they couldn't get past Lady Bird tonight, and they move on. Meanwhile, in the other by district matchup in Region 4, it's Brandeis and Carroll going at it. And how about this? Wow, Larry Stevens, 65 yards for the touchdown. The Broncos take the early 7 0 lead. The Tigers trying to make something happen. Jones is picked off by Joel Flores. And it is going back the other way. Three plays later, Jalon Dukes. He will barrel in for there from the 14. And Brandeis wins it 23 to 7. Pretty amazing to think that Smithson Valley, uh, we thought they would give Katie a game at some point. They go down to Larry Bird, Lady Bird tonight. Uh, congratulations to the Jaguars. Their first playoff win in school history. So Johnson and Brandeis will play in the next round. Normally in the first round of the playoffs, we see so many amazing matchups, but they're mismatched just out there too. An undefeated team that wins an outright district championship against a school that was the last team amongst a district to get in. Sometimes that team has a losing record like one in nine Pampa, but that wasn't the case between 10 and 0, Pflugerville Hendrickson, who took on perennial playoff power, Austin Westlake. It just happened that way when Lake Travis beat Westlake by one point a couple weeks back, and the Hawks were looking good early on. Jordan Seifert picked off by Jordan Williams. A big return here, all the way to the one, Unofficially, we think it's about 85 yards. And then from there, they would give the ball to the Oklahoma signee. And that's Samaje Pirine. Verbally committed. That made it 7 0 Hawks. Then a minute to go in the first half. Sievert, Tomlin, Slaughter. 11 yard touchdown. That made it 10 7. And Austin Westlake goes on to win it. 17 to 10. Also in Division II, Region 2, AM consolidated against Kingwood. And the Tigers are working magic here. Brandon Johns, Jackson scamping in from uh, 11 yards out. Then Kingwood would fight back. See you. All Umalula getting it done. That made it 24 to 21 at the half. Kingwood would score first in the third quarter to push the lead to 10, but the Tigers would come storming back. 
Colby Miller goes to the air and get it done to Derek Dick, and they get it down from 60 yards, consolidated, moves on. They win it by 10. So Westlake upsets Hendrickson, although that's probably a mild upset because they're so good and so road tested. They'll face AM consolidated in the area round. Meanwhile, district champ Lake Travis opens up with Round Rock Westwood. An easier game than Hendrickson, huh? And then early on, you can see it's Dominic Delira. Beautiful pass to Tyler Payne, who was a pain in the end zone. 38-yard hookup that made it 7-0. Later in the first, Sean Nixon up the middle. Beautiful stiff arm. He'll get free. He'll get by the other guys. And he'll go 53 yards to pay dirt. That made it 14 to nothing after one. Then Delira to Payne again. Another long touchdown. And Lake Travis thinking about another long state title run. In 5A Division I Region 2, Austin Bowie and Cedar Ridge in a battle where the strongest is the fittest. And that's Michael McCann to David Racine. Oh, perfect pass. Cedar Ridge is up 7 to nothing. Then later, it's Nicholas Morello, a short TD run. That made it 17 to nothing. This one was all Cedar Ridge. McCann to Charles Porter, 24 to nothing. Bad thing about winning this one, you got to face 11-0 Westwood next. They took out Oak Ridge, 52-21. So we've had a fun-filled night. we got a lot of upsets to talk about, and Craig Way will be here shortly. Let's take a break on Scoreboard Live. Coming up next, it's off to Houston. And how about Pearland Dawson? They're in a tough little playoff opener with Richland Foster. Plus, the Pearland Oilers open up the second season with all kinds of expectations. We'll check in with my man Ahmad Vital. Back with more after this short timeout. High School Scoreboard Live is brought to you by Ford F-Series, America's best-selling truck for 36 straight years. By Dairy Queen, for the best-tasting treats, eats, and drinks in Texas. DQ just tastes better. And by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. High School Scoreboard Live is brought to you by the new Wrangler Premium Performance Advanced Comfort Jeans. Available at Cavenders and Cavenders.com. The Wrangler Road to the Championship starts here and only here on Fox Sports Southwest. We will crown all the champions on the Road to the Championship at AT&T Stadium all the way from six-man to Class 5A, and we'll broadcast all of those games. Let's motor on to the Greater Houston area in 4A Division I. Pearland Austin against Richmond Foster, and this was a good one. Trevor Parker's pass is tipped in the end zone, and Brandon Taylor is right there to haul it in and make some magic to go back the other way. This was a good game. This game went back and forth. Dawson would answer, and then here comes Parker again to the air. He flares it to Evan Flares, who gets in from 50 yards out. Foster running back Antonio Williams had a beautiful game, but in the end, Dawson wins this one 24 to 23. We'll keep it in Houston. The five and four Terry Rangers up against 10 and 0 Texas City. And early on, you can see Armani Foreman, who will step in front of the pass and take it off to the races. He'll go 60 yards here and eventually knocked out of bounds in the Stingerees with a huge swing of momentum. And then Dante Foreman will take the handoff. He'll take it to the house. 243 yards rushing, four touchdowns for him. And in the fourth quarter, Terry knocking on the door. Zach Powell getting it done. Texas City wins it 41 to 19 to move on to the next round. To 5A Division I Region 3, the Pearland Oilers put it on the line against Deer Park. And Pearlands, Kalen Johnson to Jacoby Butler. And I think the Butler did it. A nice 50, a 43-yard gain. What a hit there. And then Lewis again around the end for a 38-yard score. He'll just bounce up like nothing happened. Pearland would continue to motor. Jacoby Butler will keep it and go up the gut for an 80-yard run. That would make it 42-20. to Pearland goes on to win this one. So elsewhere in Class 5A, Division II, Region 3, Cy Ridge will move on. Actually, the other one we were talking about will play Houston Memorial and the Mustangs. This will be a fun one as Cy Ridge gets past the Ike. 
And with that, let's bring in the source of Houston football, Ahmad Vital of Scout.com, who joins us on the phone now. Ahmad, you were at the Cy Ridge game. What were your impressions? Well, for one, once you go back and look at the numbers, you'll realize what we saw was a great ground game display with Chris Robinson from Cy Ridge with 175 yards and a touchdown and Texas uh, University of Texas commit from Eisenhower, Donald Catalan with 161 yards and a touchdown. Neither team really, really got the passing game going. Eisenhower did have 208 yards passing, but I'll tell you what, Rick, this came down to really about two plays. And Cy Ridge made those two plays, you know, just to be able to come down the stretch. There were a couple of calls here and there, a couple turnovers calls. And I'll tell you what, you, you just didn't know, especially in the second half, who was going to come out on the winning end with this because Eisenhower made a really, really big push towards the end. There was a call towards uh, somewhere in the fourth quarter where there could have been a, a two-point conversion to, to be able to, to tie the game up. Eisenhower decided to go for one, and that ended up uh, costing the game in the end. And, uh, and like I said, Cyrus made enough plays coming down the stretch, and, uh, and Eisenhower settled for far too many field goals tonight, and Cyrus was able to come away with the win. Manville beat a very good Laporte team tonight. Pearland Dawson squeaks out a one-point win. What jumped out about you, uh, some of those teams that advanced tonight? Well, I, I think, I, I, I'm not sure if you mentioned it, but I know you mentioned it earlier. What was really shocking tonight, I wasn't surprised over the Manville score. I wasn't really shocked about the Pearland score. Jacoby Butler had a great game there. I was more surprised about that Foster Pearland Dawson score that, that came down to the wire. I know that Foster's uh, got a whole new coaching staff going on over there, and, and, and they've, they've, they've shown well this year. And I can tell you what, I know a lot of those guys over there are quite young, but you know, Dawson made enough plays on the stretch to be able to, to come away with the win, but to see them only come away with a, with a one-point victory was a little bit shocking in the first round of the playoffs. Thanks, Ahmad. Check him out at scout.com. He's always on the pulse of what's going on in Houston. He's also a number one bookseller, not like Craig Way, who has a million books in his cellar. Break time on Scoreboard Live. Coming up next, we'll crown the final Bill Ford Tough Player of the Week winners, and we'll head to North Texas for Highland Park. The Scots have flown under the radar. It's the Wrangler Road to the Championship, brought to you in part by Cavenders. Let's roll out the Week 10 winners of the Bill Ford Tough Player of the Week trophy. Jarek Hildreth is a 2,500-yard uh, rusher and passer. He's amazing. Accounted for 31 touchdowns in Class 4A. Purdue-bound David Blow. And then how about TCU is looking forward to having our 3A winner, Big 6-4 quarterback Grayson Muelstein of Decatur. He's a straight-A student who runs a 4-5-40. Jaquan Hemphill did it all for Coleman. He ran for nine yards to carry, returned to kickoff 77 yards for a touchdown, completed six of eight passes, and that was at the first time ever at quarterback. In 1A, Colby Self ran Forson into the playoffs, 35 rushes, 313 yards and four touchdowns, and in private schools, Tristan Saints of Bishop Gorman has put up crazy numbers, 2,800 yards passing and 30 touchdowns with a 3.6 GPA. Congratulations to our winners, and thanks again to all the fans who nominated them at Player of the Week. Com. Well, number one, Allen in North Texas. They move on with a big win. They will get into the next round and take on Mesquite Horn, who won as well. Back elsewhere in North Texas, a playoff-ready Highland Park. The Scots pretty much flew under the radar all year, taking on the Colony tonight. And in the first, Highland Park working some magic from the five-yard line. Brooks Bergen calls his own number. And he is in for a touchdown. The Scots are up early and often in this one. They let it 7 to nothing, And then in the second, Bergen fakes the handoff and finds a wide open man in the end zone. And Highland Park takes the lead and never looks back. They win it 38 to 10 or maybe 31 17. I do know they won. Bergen with 191 yards, three touchdowns. He ran for two. So Highland Park moves on to take on the Kimball Knights. The Scots are poised for a long playoff run. LD Bell started the year 0-3, and, and now they're looking to surprise Hebron in the by-district round. Hebron started the game with an onside kick, not shown, but it led to this, the flea flicker, Carson Prophet to Jamal Adams, and he'll break a tackle and get into the end zone. Hebron already up 7-0. Second quarter now, up 10-0. Colson Romano, he'll get intercepted by David Akers, 
who takes it back the other way for the pick six. And the Hawks go up 17 to nothing. Now in the third, Trayvon Hughes gets the handoff. He cuts to the outside, and Hebron adds to the lead. And they will advance to the next round with ease, 27 to nothing. So they will move on and take on the winner of Cedar Hill and Temple, Joey McGuire's bunch. Remember, they made it all the way to the state title game last year. Well, many thought Skyline would roll into the second round, but think again, Plano Senior High brought it tonight. T.J. Lee, he's a special one. He will take it in for a two-yard run, bouncing off people. And Plano keeping this one tight. But here comes Skyline. Daylon Ward with a nice two-yard run here as he barrels into the end zone. And then Ward would ward off tackles a little bit later on as well. A 10-yard pass from Sedarian Copeland. They got kind of the mix-up of a quarterbacks there guys with a, a really nice experience and skyline advances 28 to 14 the final there so they move on to take on the Saxy mustangs in the area round time now to bring in corbett smith with the dallas morning news corbett you were on before us with david newberry on 1310 the ticket you were at that skyline plano, plano game what were your impressions about how plano played them tough tonight they started the game tremendously well, an eight-minute, 15-play drive. They did exactly what you'd need to do against Skyline to keep their offense off the field, shorten the game. But once Skyline's offense got on the field, they really kind of showed their strength. Uh, just a tremendously quick first drive, showed a lot of explosiveness. And Plano's defense is really legit, and they played well all season. They played well against Skyline, but offensively, Skyline just had a little too much to them. Number one, Allen and Alito roll tonight. They were both up 60 points at halftime, it seemed like. But a few surprises this weekend. Dallas Carter going down to a smaller enrollment in Lincoln. You were at that game. Did that stun you? Well, the, the thing that's shocking there about Lincoln is they only, they only suited up Eight, 28 guys on that team. Now, you can see 1A, 2A programs sometimes have more players on the sidelines. That's all they had, and uh, they really took it to a Carter team that had not lost a game this season. Now, they had two losses, but they were to forfeit. They had not been beaten on the field. Uh, the twins there, the basketball playing twins, Eric and Derek Neal, they're phenomenal athletes, and they both played well. Derek Neal on both sides of the ball as a, a secondary uh, member and as a wide receiver. I don't know how far Lincoln could go. They do get a very difficult Frisco team in the second round, a, a tough team to prepare against. Uh, they run the slot T, and Vance Gibson's one of the area's best coaches. Thanks for the knowledge, buddy. Check out Corbett Smith and the kicker, David Newberry, as we simulcast the radio show in Dallas on 1310 The Ticket at 11 o'clock leading into this show. Let's take a break. Coming up next, it's off to the Alamo City, where we already saw Smithson Valley upset. Could there be more? Find out after this. Scoreboard Live rolls on in the Alamo City. We wondered how playoff-ready 10-0 Brenham and the Bears would be tonight. They face Clemens, and early on, you can see that's Nathaniel Wells, Jr., and he is digging the Wells. He averages almost eight yards a carry, and this certainly helped. 56-yard run there, and then he's back at it. Oh, look at those moves. 28 yards to be exact there. The Bears in business again. Different quarter, same drive. Deshaun Key rolling and finding Anthony Galinsky. A 15-yard TD pass, and they roll 56 to nothing. They are awfully good. So Brenham moving on and getting it to McCallum uh, and the Knights in the next round. So how about this one with GP in Harlandale in the Coastal Bend region. GP on offense. They hand off to Devin, Devin Bisbee. He'll go 10 yards for the touchdown. They lead it 6 to nothing. Then it's Raymond again. This time touch pass to Pedroza and back into the end zone. Touchdown Indians. They lead it 7-6. Second quarter now. Harlandale back on offense. Raymond to Pedroza again. These guys keep hooking up. And that made it 17-13, under two minutes to play now. And the Indians hand off to Nick Martinez, up the middle, and Harlandale. They move on. They'll take on the winner of Corpus Christi Ray and the Rio Grande City winner. 
Now we move on to Big Spring. And Big Spring, well, they do big things. You know the Tannehill brothers. One place for the Dolphins. This is the other one. And he goes to Tate Kennedy for the touchdown, putting Big Spring up seven to nothing early. Then the first play on the next possession, Tannehill handing off to Hunter Hill, and he'll do the rest. Oh, look at that move as he gets to the outside, breaking tackles left and right, this kid does. And eventually, he'll get into the end zone. Great blocking there. And then after a Fabens fumble, it would only take four plays for the Steers to score. This time, Tanny Hill on the quarterback draw, and they roll 41 to nothing. And by the way, Ryan Tanny Hill, the Miami Dolphins quarterback, has only won one playoff game in his career, went on to AM, and now doing big things for the Dolphins. Well, Big Spring will take on the winner of Borger and Andrews next. All right, Craig Way is in the house. And that means a lot of good talk about Austin and everywhere else as we continue Scoreboard Live. Coming up next on the show, we will travel to the Permian Basin. Odessa High is playoff bound for the first time in a while. And C.J. Edison was running wild for a school record tonight. That and more as we continue after this. High School Scoreboard Live is brought to you by the new Wrangler Premium Performance Advanced Comfort Jeans. Available at Cavenders at Cavenders.com. The Wrangler Road to the Championship starts here and only here. Nobody covers high school football like Fox Sports Southwest. We will be there every step of the way until the new champions are crowned. It's all part of the Wrangler Road to the Championship on Fox Sports Southwest. Join us as they play six-man all the way to Class 5A at the same venue for the first time ever. And Craig Way, for the first time ever, will be the first broadcaster in the history of Texas to be the play-by-play -play man on every single classification. Just flew in from Austin, and boy, are your arms tired. Uh, but glad to be here, ready to go. Yeah. And it, it, just another typical Friday night, right? With yeah. plenty of surprises as well. There's no doubt about that. But there's also some games that uh, weren't quite as surprising, depending on where you were and across the state of Texas. For example, as we move out further west, Odessa High taking on El Paso Franklin and the uh, Broncos back in the postseason and ready to go. Early on, however, for Odessa High, it's C.J. Edison taking it off. 45-yard touchdown run, put the Broncos on top by a score of 7 to nothing. Then, afterwards, it's Edison with a 9-yard touchdown run, and it extends the lead. It makes it a 14 to nothing lead. Things looking good for the Broncos. Darren Walker not liking what he's seizing because he's seeing more of C.J. Edison. How about 89 yards on this one? Yeah, it's all Broncos. The red and white win it by a score of 61 to 15 and move on to the area round of the playoffs. Next, a little daytime playoff action and getting ready for this matchup for Montwood and Central, the Rams, and early on it is San Angelo Central getting into the end zone. Another pass, now Montra, Montwood coming right back with the blocks down the sidelines, 50 yards for the score, game tied at seven. Then Montwood, little Wildcat set. Reddick takes it in a 14 to seven lead, but San Angelo Central, too much for those Bobcats having a big year in the Contro Valley, and they knock off Montwood by a score of 42 to 21. Midla Lee, El Dorado, and Caden Coots to Caleb Nunez. He'll take it in from a nice 20 yard run. Seven to nothing, the score at that point. Then Coots, the interception here by Jorge Loyal. Oh man, look at the defense there as he stepped in front of that pass. That would have been a touchdown. Then Coots deep to Reed Niddle. Aaron Dibbin, Dobbins getting the touchdown there. And they get it done 14 to three. They let it there, but uh, so many crazy games. You know, there was one that really jumped out at me. White House with Patrick Mahomes, who's been breaking records out there in East Texas, taking on Arlington Seguin, who scored 21 unanswered points in their game. They sent it to overtime. 
but White House survives. Yeah, there are plenty of big surprising results. And even when the favorite team won, in this case, the Wildcats, state ranked all season long, that's what the postseason is all about. And that's where you do have some surprises. Now, we've had some shocking results in the playoffs. And it's only round one of the postseason. So we're going to see some more as it develops. And we're not even all the way through round one because there's a lot of Saturday games still on tap. How stunning was the Hendrickson loss to you? Uh, I think it's not as much stunning as it is the way in which it happened. Remember, after Hendrickson had lost their quarterback a couple of weeks ago, tough for the Hawks to get going. They only ran 20 offensive plays in the second half. Darren Allman always gets his defenses ready, always gets his team ready for postseason, and they knock off Hendrickson. And now you got Westlake and AM consolidated meeting for the second time this year. Remember, Westlake had to rally back from that big deficit to win the earlier regular season meeting, and now they're going to play him for the second time in the playoffs in as many years. Westlake beat them in the area round last year. They're going to play at Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco next Friday the night. The familiar names, Westlake, Lake Travis, yep. they still continue to do what they do come playoff time. Well, let's go check out the Lake Worth Vernon game. And this was a good one. A lot of big plays in it early on. Danny Valverde. Check this out. A 69-yard TD run. And Vernon, just like that, is on top. Seven to nothing. But what you do, I can do better. Watch this. Kelton Versi would respond with a 70-yard run of himself. And that would cut it to seven to six. They missed the extra point. But man, you love all the big plays we're seeing in this one. Valverde gets his second touchdown of the game. Vernon pulls away. 49 to 21 so they will move on and the Lions will take on Liberty Hill who had a thrill tonight as they move on to the next yeah, round yeah Liberty Hill knocked out Hillsborough first time for Hillsborough to be there in the playoffs in 16 years so good story there but Liberty Hill Jerry Vance's team still on the roll that's a great second round matchup let's take a break it's off to the panhandle Wichita Falls the Brasses Valley Plus, the Fox Sports Southwest girls, Kami and Liddy, will tell us what's going on in social media if you keep it where it is. School Board Live rolls on the panhandle. Friendship against Palo Duro. And it's Sims fumbling the snap, recovered by Friendship and Jonathan Beck. He's Johnny on the spot on that one. Then in the second, up 14 to nothing, Palo Duro Sims is sacked by Tyler Keeger. Loss of 14 and down on the only one yard line. Then Friendship fueling by TD pass to TJ Clark. 21 to nothing, Friendship. Friendship moves on with the win and they win big 49 to nothing. They will take on Del Valle, the Conquistadores, in the next round. Herford taking on Canyon. And this was a good one as the thundering herd is ready to go. Blake Weaver, 31-yard touchdown run here, and that would make it 8 to nothing. Love to see your team get out to a quick early lead. Canyon's Tanner Neese is at peace with himself. He returns the punt for a touchdown the other way, and that made it 14 to nothing. But Canyon would continue the onslaught. Drew Manning picks off Dane Lowry, who returns it, and it's all Canyon, 71 to 21, and that is a great win as they move on to the second round. To the Wichita Falls region, and that's Rojo. That means Ryder, of course, getting right on. Honorable ones and the honorable ones of Ryder taking on Boswell, but they got some honorable ones of their own. Antoine Stevenson, he had the touchdown run. Pioneers lead 7-0. Stevenson did it once. Why not again? Takes it over. 14-0. Boswell with the lead. Of course, Ryder with all those offensive weapons. Here's a couple of them. Chase London hooking up with Davon Allison. That's his 15th touchdown of the year, but that's all he had Boswell wins 42 to 7 so you say pretty impressive stuff now what's next for Boswell Alito <laughs> good luck with yeah, that well, Alito you know. scored like 70 points in the first half yeah uh, it's it, it's going to be difficult for anybody I think to take out Alito and you know that's that's one of the things that one of those daunting tasks that comes up for a team in each round of the playoffs. You say you win, and then you go on, and who's next? I'll give you another example. Conley High School down in the Waco area. They won their by-district matchup, and they draw Fairfield oh. in round two. Fairfield, of course, was taking on die ball that got in with one win this year, one and eight when they went in, and Fairfield knocks them out. So, you know, now it's uh, Conley and Fairfield. But a lot of these teams, you know, they're, they're excited to have the opportunity, looking forward to the chance, 
And we've already seen upsets in round one. Who's to say it couldn't happen in round two? It yeah, you, you almost wonder what Hendrickson's thinking. Why can't we get a one and nineteen? Yeah, their you biggest know? their biggest problem was just trying to get some offense going in that game. Samaji P. Ron held to under seventy yards rushing in the ball game tonight. Great job by Austin Westlake. Well, time now to see what's trending in social media media with our two trendsetters, Kami and Lydia, the Fox Sports Southwest girls. Take it away, guys. Thanks, Rick. Well, it has been another great night in social media, especially because it's playoff time. Such an exciting time of so year, exciting. isn't it? Yes, I love it. Well, we have some of our favorite photos and tweets to share with you right now. All right, let's take a look at our first one. And I got to say, one of my favorites, sent in by Travis Brown. And of course, it wouldn't be fall in North Texas without bleach blonde hair. Okay, I have to ask, does this not bring you back to your high school? Because I remember varsity being straight blonde. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> my favorite were the guys that had my color hair that dyed it bleach blonde, and I was thinking, well, I don't know. Maybe it scares our opposing team because I guess it worked. Tonight, Southlake took the win 56 to 14. Arlington Bowie with a loss. Nice. Our next photo is from Casey Joe. So proud of our boys in blue. The Allen Eagles fight, fight, fight. Let's come home with a win and an 11 and 0 record. Well, it looks like they came home with an 11 and 0 record. Allen won 63 to 6. Blowout. Blowout. <laughs> Well, we've had another great week here on Football Friday. Can't wait to find out more about the playoff coverage next week. Stay tuned, and we have uh, the buzz on social media, and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks, great girls. Time. Great stuff. Coming up next, two teams with state championship dreams that haven't been to the playoffs in a combined 66 years. Here's the Beezer with the preview. Hey, what a great storyline. In fact, a ton of storylines for this one. We can't bury the lead. Union Grove has not been in the playoffs since, let's see, the Beatles were roaming U.S. soil. That was back in the late 60s. That's not, not winning playoffs. That's the last time they even made it to the playoffs. But, boy, they are in this year. But not exactly playoff regulars are the Wascom Wildcats. They haven't been in it since uh, Jerry Seinfeld's show was very popular in the mid-'90s. So neither team is very familiar with playoffs, but one of these teams is going to continue on into round two. It should be fantastic. And it's our DQ Big Game of the Week. It's coming up. About a 4A Division I Region 2 matchup. Those are the Golden Dragons and Nacogdoches taking on Mansfield Summit. Summit looking to drive and Braden Nolan sacked by Nax defensive end Ja'Cory Whitaker as that uh, Dragon defense makes a play. Now the Dragons on offense. James Oglesby on the quarterback draw. Nice game for him here before being tripped up. He'll go to the air. Oglesby connecting with L.J. Barnes for the touchdown, but Summit rallies back for a 25-15 win over Nacogdoches. Summit now takes on Wiley in the area round at 4A D1. Wow. And there it is right there. Region 2 of that 4A Division 1 matchup. Mansfield Summit taking on those Wiley Pirates next week. Well, in the first week of the playoffs, we've already seen amazing stories, Craig. Scurry Rosser getting their first playoff win in 15 years. Richmond George Ranch, first playoff win in school history. Lincoln, who at an enrollment disadvantage took out Dallas Carter. How about it? But in our first playoff DQ big game of the week, who better to highlight than two schools that combined for 66 years of a playoff drought? Photographer Jeff Irwin wasn't even born yet when Union Grove last made the playoffs in 1968. Wascom hasn't been there since 1992. Something's got to give in the DQ Big Game of the Week. Not much has changed in Union Grove, Texas in the last half century. People have stayed true to who they are. The town and the schools just moseying through the years. Until now. This year's football squad has this town singing a different tune. For the first time in 46 years, these lions roaring into the playoffs. And the Wascom Wildcats better beware, they're coming back in with a bang. Three, two, one. The longest playoff drought in Class 2A is now up in flames. This squad's got the swagger of a winner. Sure, everybody right now wants to say, one more time, congratulations, boys! Yeah. One, two, three! Yeah. 
But hold on just a second. There's a slow burn flickering here at Wascom as well. They're in the same boat as Union Grove. Well, half the boat. While it's been over 40 years for Union Grove missing the playoffs, it's been over 20 here for the Cats. The fourth longest active streak in East Texas, over. Wildcats actually clawed their way in last year, but had to forfeit seven wins, so these cats more than ready to pounce. But the Grove, with all paws on deck, even the littlest Cubs in on the action. And the boys already recognized for their breakthrough season. Named forever etched in UG lore. But now it's time to saddle up and ride. And who else has a helicopter dropping goodies at their team send off? But getting to play Wascom and getting through Wascom, two different stories. Currently 11th in the 2A AP state poll. Cats average 57 points per game and don't give up much on D either. Playoffs, what it's about, you know? So to move on, you'll have to go through Wascom's destruction or Grove's destiny. Nobody gives us any credit. The only ones that truly believe are right here in this circle. We do believe, right? Yes, sir. So when we hit the field, you give us everything you got. Everything you got. A big win tonight sets Texas football on its ear. It's going to set them on their ear because we're going to beat a 10-0 team tonight, right? Yes, sir. Get in here. Let's go. Brothers, one, two, three. Brothers. 45 years of pent-up frustration. Opening kickoff. Uh-oh. June Bug Johnson, quick as a bug. 62 yards around the end. Gone. 14 seconds in, it's 7-0 Wascom. Then, check it out, the trickeration. Trace Carter to Kevin Johnson to Thomas Ford in the reverse, but back to Carter, who hangs it deep. There's Junebug again. Wow, 53 yards. This one, his third TD of the half. 21-0. But the Grove fights back, this time on the punt. Zoinks, fumble. Junior Micah Bradley recovers, new life, and it leads to three. Then Wascom punting. Zoinks again. Fake punt. So good it fakes out. Eight-time Emmy Award-winning photographer Jeff Irwin. But he's back on it, and it's a good thing because it's a touchdown. 35-3 Wildcats running wild at the break. Take care of the business hand right here. Let's make sure that when this last 24 minutes is over with, we're ready to come back and get a W. You understand? Yes, sir. Hey, everybody that rotates in, you give great efforts. You understand? Yes, sir. And right, let's go get ready to go to war, man. Hey, Warriors on three. One, two, three. Warriors. Second half. Cat D forces a three and out, and then Benton gone again. His second of the day. 68 yards, 42 to three. KJ, Kevin Johnson, adds his second later. A 52-yarder. Wow. Ballers up and down this lineup. Ball game. Cats coach Whitney Keeling played for Grove coach Roger Adams back in the day. Today, he is the master. 56-17, your final score. Wascom, your bi-district champ. After last season, after that tragedy that happened, we dedicated the whole uh, two-a-day summer that we knew we was going to come out and play for the seniors uh, the past year, and we were going to make the playoffs just for them. Ooh. Oh, so a hype. I mean, I seen nothing but blocking stuff so in front of me. I, I was like, I already knew I was about to go, and I did. <laughs> he did say, let's go ahead and get the ball uh, Dylan and see what he can do with it. I said, and he just gave it to me, and I just ran it back, as I always say. When it, when it first was happening, did you see just the hole open up like a C's uh, party? Yeah, yeah, but I had to beat three dudes. That's the only thing I was worried about, beating them three dudes. And I did it. They did a good job of keeping us contained on the outside a lot better than a lot of teams had. And, and then it seemed like everybody was going up the middle. So, you know, and I, I think we're one of those uh, four-headed monsters is what people call us. <laughs> That's better than three. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, it may have taken 22 years, but the party doesn't end tonight. Yeah. Yeah, moving on. From Tiger Jeff Irwin and producer Clark Rowe, I'm Neil Beasley with your DQ. Big game of the week. Oh, are they going to enjoy that trophy. Congratulations to both schools. All these kids can always say one thing. 
We made it to the playoffs. There's a lot of people that can't say that in those two towns. Wascom has their first 11-0 record in school history. Cool case of pupil beating the teacher in that one. And this is a really dangerous team. This is a team that won in Week 10 over Hugh Springs to win that district title. And, of course, if you drive on I-20 and you're just about to cross the state line into Louisiana, what's the last town you see? Wascom, or if you're coming from Louisiana, the first town you see is Wascom. <laughs> so they win and they move on. Had a couple of weird things happen tonight, by the way, or, or things that caused things to happen that were weird. For example, Midway High School was due to play tomorrow afternoon against Mansfield, and the game was due to be in Corsicana, the neutral site. They've had to move the game from Corsicana to Midlothian and move the kickoff time back to six. Why? The scoreboard in Corsicana caught fire and burned. What so, is it, Big Tex or something? I, I don't know, but, <laughs> but it burned. So they're going to have to play the game in Midlothian tomorrow evening. And then it was another deal. Uh, you've probably heard about the, uh, the gas well and the fire that has happened in Milford. They were due to play their six-man playoff game against Cranfield's Gap in Clifton. They'll still play in Clifton, but it'll be tomorrow, not a Friday night matchup. Wow. Break time on Scoreboard Live. We'll come back with more highlights and reaction with Craig Way in the house as we continue on Scoreboard Live. High School Scoreboard Live is brought to you by the new Wrangler Premium Performance Advanced Comfort Jeans. Available at Cavenders and Cavenders.com. The Steel Knights have been doing it pretty strong getting to the state semifinals in each of the last three years. Taking on San Antonio Clark. And this guy is pretty fun to watch. Justin Stockton, who's going to Texas Tech. He gets in for the touchdown, and they'll just keep going to him, which is a pretty good thing. 2,000-yard-plus rusher, and look at him again here. I think this kid's pretty good. Number four for six. That made it 31-6 to six at the half. He ran for 231 in the game, 18 carries, four touchdowns, and they roll 52-6 to six, the final there. How about that score? There's six-man D1 there, happy beating Paducah, 108-91, and they didn't 45 them. You know the rule. If you're up by 45 or more at any point in the second half, the ball game is over. Well, that one had to play to its conclusion, but the Cowboys outlasted the Dragons to win it by 17, 108-91. Imagine you put a you put 91 on the board and you lose by 17. It doesn't seem right. You sure that's not a basketball score? Time for the play. Play of the day. It takes us to the Summer Creek Beaumont Central game at Beaumont. And check it out. Aaron Sharp, who's going to Kansas State, a sharp pass out of his own end zone to my man Tory Johnson. And look at this, he runs right out of his shoes to score a <laughs> touchdown. Summer Creek went in to went on to win that one. Nate, 98 yards to the house. Wanted to mention that Throckmorton went down. That's pretty impressive stuff because they are a six-man team that's been in the state championship game every single year, it seems like. Yeah, and uh, old Calvert got a big win in by district as well. Back with more after this. Are High School Scoreboard Live is brought to you by Ford F-Series, America's best-selling truck for 36 straight years. By Dairy Queen, for the best-tasting treats, eats, and drinks in Texas. DQ just tastes better. And by State Farm, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Always entertaining when a San Antonio area school plays an Austin area school like Hayes and their bleacher creatures there. Five-game winning streak. Quarterback Jeff Jordan's had a good year. 43-yard strike to his big target. Hayden Cagle, Rebs make it count. Cody Gandy, an eight-yard touchdown run. And Hayes on top by a count of 7-0. It was 10-0 Rebels. And... Then it's Jeff Jordan doing it with his legs. Eight-yard touchdown run, 17-0. Hayes now will meet Rouse at the Palace, the Kelly Reeves Athletics Complex, next Friday night. What about Southwest? The Dragons taking on the Panthers of O'Connor and Zach Galindo putting on a show. This guy is sensational. Galindo keeping after that one. And it's probably a good result, huh? Oh, look at that fake. Oh, yep, he gets in there. Touchdown for O'Connor. Galindo at it again. Good things happen when the ball's in his hands. This time he passes to number 80, 
Colby Lunsford, who scores another touchdown for the Panthers. O'Connor wins it 31-6, to and they move on to round two. Maybe it's the game of the night. White House and Arlington's the game. Didn't look like it would be that way. Patrick Mahomes would have a big night early throwing as he connects right there for the touchdown. That one to Jalen Lewis, then Ryan Cheatham on a six-yard pass for Mahomes. They were up 23 to nothing. Only the Cease again come back and force overtime in this contest. In the end, White House survives. They live to play another day. State-ranked Wildcats win it in OT 50-44. So do they play? Sulphur Springs. Speaking of shootouts, wow. Wildcats, another group, beat Denison tonight 66-42. No, they're not playing six-man. That's 4A football. 66-42. The final in that one. How about some of the matchups we're going to see in the area round? You're going to have Coppell against Skyline. That seems like a regional final. That's a big one. I'll tell you another big one, too. Look at it in Class 3A, where you're going to have Carthage and Navasota. Two state-ranked teams meeting in round two. That happens a lot of times, especially we mentioned there's some quirks that happen on Class 3A this year. What with 3A Division I going to a 64-team bracket and 3A D2? Some of those outstanding districts bump up against one another. Also, the uh, great season for Lago Vista comes to an end. They fall to state ranked and unbeaten Hallettsville tonight. Almost pulled D1. that off. 41-35 the final. Wow. Thanks so much for watching. Join us next week as we continue the Wrangler Road to the state championships at AT&T Stadium. Have a great weekend.